All right, folks, you know what time of the year it is. It's time to break them, you know, your grill out, your smoker, whatever you have to cook outdoors, now's the time. And guess what? We finna kick it off with a tomahawk steak. Let's get it. Okay, folks, so look, I want you guys to come down here and take a look at this beauty, right? This is a nice tomahawk. You know what I mean? Uh, what I'm gonna tell you is right now, I don't want you guys to like jump back and be like, oh my goodness. You know what I mean? This dude put a lot of salt on there. Listen, it's gonna take some salt, right? Cause we need to pull some moisture out. So I'm gonna put it on here like that. And you're gonna see when we see it again, you're gonna see it's gonna be nice and moist on the top. You know what I mean? That's where it pulls it out. And it depends on how long that I let it stay on here. Then what it'll do is it'll kind of like dry out. But we, right now we wanna pull some of this moisture out, right? So I just hit it like this. Please don't jump back and say, like, man, that's a lot of salt. When you're dealing with a piece of meat this big, you must have it. And I got it. This right here is going to fall off, but we're getting ready to put salt everywhere on here. Now, I noticed I didn't put no binder on it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But on this one right here, this is for all my beginners. I'm going to show you just how to get down and what makes this, you know, so, so good. Right? We go out and spend all that money for these tomahawks. You know what I mean? We can make these at home. And a lot of people are scared to make them because of the amount of money that it takes to, you know, to purchase them. Okay, so now you see what it looks like, right? We got a nice, you know, a lot of salt on here, so it'll pull it out. Now we got two options. I could have do it like this and put it in my refrigerator, uncover it, and let it stay overnight, or I can let it go for about two or three to up to four hours, you know, just outside in the in the elements. And when I say outside, I mean it doesn't have to be in the refrigerator. Just take it, put it in your uh, in your kitchen. You know what I mean? And just let it let the salt do its thing. Now, the key to making these it depends on how you like them. Some people like them rare medium rare you know what i mean you're like a medium and then i don't want to talk about nothing past that because uh medium well it would be the furthest i can go i can't do well done right but you got to have a meat thermometer right and because i'm gonna be using my rec tech you know behind me you guys get a chance to see like when you get yourself something nice like that it comes with these probes it attempt and do everything for you i'm gonna give you what i'm going to do for this right here, I'm gonna go four hours, right? So I'm gonna see you guys in four hours. I'm gonna, like I said, put it in my kitchen, set it off to the side and let the salt do its thing. Okay, so look, it's been about about four hours, right? We didn't went ahead. I want you guys to come around, take a look at that. And that's what it looked like. See, it's starting to crack up because it kind of like dried up a little bit of the moisture. And if I pull back right here, look at my, my board. See how it pulls it up? And it, you know, you can see some of the moisture to come out of there. It just pulls up right here. These are what you call juice rings. These are great to have when you get a cutting board, folks. Catch all the juice, especially when I let it rest. Now, what I want to show you is, I've already patted it dry, right? On the bottom side, that's where a little bit of the moisture is too. We're gonna pat that dry. Now my dual, my Rectech dual fire, look, it's got two zones, right? You got this one, and then you have this one over here. This make it great for me, because when I'm doing something low and slow, I can do it over here, and then when I have something like I need to sear or anything like that, I use this chamber. Now, I've already got this set. You guys don't see none of that smoke pillowing out of here like that, because that'd be that dirty smoke, right? Right now, it's got that little wave to it just that clean smoke this is what we're looking for right so when i open this up i'm gonna set this in the inside we already at 500 degrees what we're gonna do is we just want to sear it and get it going folks all right so we at 500 degrees let me go ahead and get this all right and remember i said i wanted to show you the back side we were gonna have a little moisture i just like to pat that dry now i'm gonna put this in the dry side up. And we're not getting ready to touch it. Let me hurry up and get this closed. If you drop back down here, it said the temperature drop. We have 599, it'll drop down just a little further, but then it's gonna work its way back up to 500. Now I'm gonna sear this a minute and a half, right? And then I'm gonna move it over a little bit more and I'm gonna go another minute and a half just to put some a little crisscross on the lines. Then we flip it over and do the same. Okay, folks, so look, I lowered my temperature and I'm gonna run a little higher than normal. 
I got it set at 325 degrees, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tomahawk and bring it and put it in just like that. Now, with my dual fly, fire Rectech grill, check this out. It has this little hole right here. This is my meat probe, right? So we can get this like this, bring this around, won't let no heat out, and it keeps it kind of cool, right? Now, I'm getting ready to put this in here like this, put it in here, and I want you guys to tell me what temperature do you think that it should be? I'm gonna go ahead and go right there in the center of it and leave it like that. I want this to be 130 degrees before I take it off, right? So we got it in here, just like you see. Now I'm gonna give it a close. Then we can read what it is in the inside. Right now it's saying it's 96 degrees in the middle, right? You see it? I'm gonna take this off when it get to 130. Then we'll have medium rare, medium rare in the center, right? Now, for those of you guys that don't really eat it like that, on the outside, will be cooked more. So you want to feed your guests that are, that are scared to embark on that, that flavorful journey. You know what I mean? They can start on the outside, and then as it gets to the middle, then they go down to the chef's cut. Okay, folks, so I'm going to go ahead and pull my probe out. Right, we'll let that stay down right now because we just reached 130. Right, so I'm going to get under here and help pick it up just so that it doesn't tear. And I'm going to set it right here. I'm going to move that over there to the table, and we're going to let this rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, folks, now listen, I done let this rest for about 20 minutes, right? You can see the juices. Look at that right there. That's what has not went back into the steak, right? So when it contracts because it's tight, it pushes out the juices. And then as it, you know, over time, it starts to relax and then it suck it back in the inside, right? I gotta tell you this, I get this kind of success and the flavor is second to none, you know, using my Rectech, you know, 1200 dual fire. You know what I mean? Uh, I love it. Uh, and I didn't have to do it that way. I told you, I did it all in one chamber. I could have done one half and that and then seared in the other. You gotta do it how you want to, but I like to do it when I'm doing multiple things on there. So it's like having two, to me, it's like just having, uh, you know, two smokers two pellet grills now i'm gonna take this and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna oh speaking of that look at my meat slicer you guys listen i sold a lot of these but listen i got a lot more of these you guys got to get yourself one of these this is spring we got that big meats them heavier meats to do so get yourself one of these listen you can you too can cut like a pro right so i ain't want to cut it and get all of that over there but you see that right there mm. that right there if you got an animal you know what i'm saying you got a dog he do something to chew on just to get him right. Now, let's take this. Let's find and let's look at that grain. Now, it looks like to me everything is going this way. So, I'm going to start cutting this way. Remember, it'll be more well done towards the end, but in the middle, we want to have medium rare, right? So, this is where we wanted it to be 30, uh, 135 degrees, right? So, I'll just cut like this and we'll do it just like that. Now, you guys can cut these as thick and as thin as you would like. Now you see this piece right here I'm cutting off? That's that fat right there. I know some of y'all gonna say, AB, you supposed to throw that away, man. No, for me, this chef's choice. I'm gonna set that right there because I'm gonna chew on it like it's a crackling. All right, so come here. We just, huh. Look how, look how this knife just cuts through this like butter. That's when it's done right, folks. Look at that right there. And you can see, look, still juicy, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just take me a little piece right here. You know, I'm gonna get a little smaller piece. Cheers, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know how I was eating my meat well done. That right there is good. I done had a couple slices. I done had enough steak for the day. But it's nothing like starting with some good steak. You know what I mean? Then when it's cooked properly, we took all the right steps. We seared. We brought it up to temp right. And you've seen the final results. This is it right here. Now, I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below, what would you do? And then answer this question. How come I didn't use the pepper? Now, with that being said, let me just take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there. Check this out. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. Y'all like the way I said it this time? I'm out. Peace.